So I went out hoping to get into some dry flash for carp. Um, August and into September is usually pretty good um, dry fly action. I did it basically with my same setup. I only got into dry fly for a little bit in the carp mall. I put that on here. This first one right here is really the only true dry fly I got. Um, and it was right in the scum line. Uh, there was a couple carp in here. You know, a lot of times when you get into any carp in a spot like this, even though there was probably five or six in this area rising, you catch one and pretty well scare everything else. Um, I was able to drag a dry on another one. Um, and, and again, for this, I was just using a little size 12 parachute atoms tied on a, on a um, heavy wire hook. Um, still fun, but there just wasn't that much rising. Um, also, while I was on the, this river, uh, they actually raised it while I was there, but absolutely stunning little mirror, uh, you know, in the, the probably six or seven pound range. And then here's another one. This one was rising just a little bit, but it was moving around a lot and I actually end up dragging the fly on this one, which you'll see here in just a second. Um, you know, make the cast and then actually pulled it just like you would do a drag and drop. I do this a lot for cruising fish. In fact, I have another video that I'm working on editing where I catch, I mean, I had a great day. This day I had a great day too. I probably landed over 40 fish. Um, but those are the only two that, that are really what I would call dry fly drag or dry fly were these first two. And then after that, the rest of it is, um, more traditional, uh, some of it sets up just like it would a normal flat for carp. And some of it, um, I'm going to point out some things that are a little bit different about fishing a river. Um, you know, your approach is basically the same. You want to try to get your fly in front of the fish without the fish knowing you're there, or in most cases, um, watching or hearing the fly come down. Um, and that, and that's usually the approach you're going to take with carp. So, so like this, right, this is right on the edge out to the right there. There's actually quite a bit of current, but if you get over into these little eddies and these little areas that are protected, that's usually the places that I try to target the carp. So that's what this is here. Um, so it's a pocket that ends up feeling a lot like a flat, even though, like I said, there's current stuff out to the edge. Um, you know, the, the carp will sit in currents and feed. Um, they won't do it a ton um and and, and they're not going to work really hard to sit in a current if they are they're, they're probably spooked or something so that's really why you're if you're fishing a river and you're chasing carp you want to really look for those edge areas um also in muddy areas like this um you know you're going to do you're going to be able to find areas that have less mud and are more clear if you can get over onto the edges uh, you know, when I first got here, the water wasn't too bad, but it raised about a foot while I was fishing this river. Um, I don't know, probably doubled in the overall flow rate. Uh, and so some of these at the beginning, you can see a little bit better. Um, and this guy was feeding in the shadows there, actually kind of tailing and then uh, moved out into the sunlight there. And I'm trying to stay in the shadow here, right? Because if he's in the sun and I'm in the shadow, he can't see me at all. So I'm trying to use the shadow there to my advantage make a cast there traditional drag and drop and you know again no giants today I, I i've been uh again weird year having a hard time finding many of the bigger fish this year in a lot of the areas i go to um i did really well in the spring but and that's normal springtime is when i usually catch my biggest fish um but uh but this area really i'm not I, you know they're kind of a really cool almost a leather carp there um but yeah, I, n nothing real big, um, you know, a lot in the five to seven pound range, which is which is our most typical size. Um, but usually when I go here, I, I usually can find a pretty good one, at least get a shot at a couple. I didn't see any real big ones, but it was more dirty than normal as well. And normally I'm seeing more feet on the surface. And, and like I said, there was very little of that. So it was mostly just what I could find along the edges. Um, that, that we're moving out of the main current. The, and again, like this one was kind of cool because he was sitting in the current just a little bit, but he was right on the edge in a spot where he didn't have to move very far. And again, you're just doing the drag and drop. You know, you're gonna put the fly out in front of them more so that when you pull it over and drop it, it drops down in front of them. And then usually I'm gonna impart a little jig action, which you'll see a lot uh, as, as you watch some of these takes where I do jig it just a little bit, as it, especially in the for the fish that are sitting in the current. You give it just a little bit of a jig um, and it will trigger a strike a lot of times. So basically drag and drop, little jig, 
and uh, a lot of times that will trigger a strike. But again, this one, it's just, just normal drag and drop over its head. Uh, so that one didn't actually see it on that first cast there. You see how close that was. But again, in dirty water, think remember, it's got to be real close. So redragged it there, and then I dropped it in much closer on this one. You know, the other one was probably only seven or eight inches away, but that one also came down just along the left side of its face. I've mentioned that before. The first one was straight in front of it. Carp don't see very well straight in front of them. Um, they see much better out to the sides because of their monocular vision. So even though it looked like a pretty good cast and presentation on that first one, where it came down, uh, the carp just didn't see it. So when I put it back in there and drop it to the side, um, immediately got the eat. And then again, no giants, but good solid fish and a lot of really, really pretty mirrors. A handful of commons, but mostly mirrors. And these these fish here get a lot of sun, so they have a lot of really cool golden color. A lot of really pretty fish. So this again is moving slowly down the bank. I've got a pair of carp up against the bank right here. Um, I actually tried to get that first one. I uh, took a shot at it first, but uh, it kind of moved out and started moving the other direction fairly quickly. So I was then able to do a drag and drop here on the one behind it. I don't know if you saw that cloud to the right there, but there was a fish in there I didn't see, so I spooked it in the process of going after the first one. Um, fortunately for me, this other one stuck around, uh, gave me a pretty good explosion here, a little bit of a tail dance, and again, another solid fish. Um, but you'll notice again there, it's right against the bank. You know, once in a while, I'll catch them coming in from the current, um, and you'll see some of that as well, but this was, you know, up in an area where there's really hardly any movement of water um, and, and the carp are going to try to be in those kind of areas. That's where they want to be. And so when you're fishing a river, you know, concentrate on the edges like that and you should be able to find them. And, and, and again, there's other benefits like better visibility and stuff like that that you'll see here. So again, this is another real similar situation right up against the bank. Um, you see the little point to the right of where this fish was blocking any current there. So we're in an area where there's really no water flow. And that is where the carp like to to come in and feed. Uh, this one's just a tailor. Um, got it in there and dropped it right to the left side. You see the turn right there and the suck and then and then we're on again. Not straight in front of them, just off to the, the side just a little bit and that's optimal for what we're going for. This next fish is a pretty good example of uh, using clouds and stuff to determine, at least to find the fish. Now in this case, I waited until I could see the tail move just a little bit before I presented to the fish. Uh, and again, I kind of just making the same drag and drop, but then you'll see as it comes down, um, see I gave it a little jig there. I'm just working it just a little bit. I'm actually not even paying a whole lot of attention here because I, I can't see the fish and he's eating it. So, um, cast of the fish, worked it just a little bit in the water in front of a cloud. Uh, it's not my favorite way to catch fish because I can't see the actual eat, but it is doable. Um, this one was, I don't know, there's a certain amount of luck to it anytime you catch them like this because it's really hard to tell when the carp eats. Really, ideally, you don't want your line tight. If your line's not tight, you can't tell when they eat. There's nothing to indicate it. 
Um, but the way a carp eats usually is it's a sucking. So if, if your line's tied, a lot of times they'll suck and the fly won't go in their mouth. I don't know. It's it's a little bit of a catch-22 in that scenario. But um, anyway, it, it was a good example of really muddy. Can't really see anything. All I could see was the cloud. And then I saw just a little bit of the tail, put it out there, and was able to connect with that fish. Uh, this is another more what you're going to see in a river like this where they're over on the edge. Um, you know, drag and drop, put it in on them. And that fish was only like seven or eight feet away from me, um, right along the bank, just over the top of some reeds, which if you got that kind of cover, sometimes you can get real close in these situations. Uh, this is one kind of moving in from the current. Um, and then a lot of these fish were kind of going in circles in and out of some of these areas. Um, and, and a lot of it was, I think, because I bumped some of the other fish. So some of the fish were just kind of repositioning, which is what that was. And so this one was coming back in and I was able to get a good drag and drop on him and triggered a strike on the drop on that one. This fish may have been one of the hardest of the day. As you can see, I got the wind blowing pretty. So this is downstream for me and the wind's blowing back up at me pretty hard. And so what I'm trying to do is squeeze it. You know, if there's no wind, this is an easy cast <laughs> to drop it in between the bank and the fish and pull it over here. Um, but in this situation, you know, you got about 18 inches to work with. The wind's blowing your face pretty hard. And it, it was probably, I don't know, 12 to 15 mile per hour um, blowing in my face there, but threw it up there in between the fish and the bank. And then I could really see that one, the fish come off to come up and, and eat that one. Um, this is another one that's pretty dang similar. It's almost the exact same scenario um, where I've got a fish right up against the bank here. And then you kind of see, I try to make the cast there. Again, the wind is just, it's so strong in my face. Um, and then I'm able to, to pull it over and put it right there. And then uh, this one doesn't come as far or as aggressively to eat. It just turns and eats it. But, you know, these last two, that is it, just challenging. Into the wind, a very lightly weighted fly, um, 16 feet of leader. <laughs> it's not an optimal scenario. You'd be way better to get on the other side of the fish and cast. But there's really where I was fishing. There's no way to do that. So... I had to make the cast into the wind and I was able to make it and ended up catching both of those fish and, and basically the exact same scenario, working my way down that bank. And behind me, it's really steep. So, I mean, like I said, there's just, there's no way around it. Uh, scare the fish or give it a shot. And I'd rather give it a shot. So uh, that's pretty much it. Um, you know, another one right here, this is kind of a close shot. Again, this is kind of into the wind, um, but it's fairly close to me there. I can do a little drag and drop. Uh, this is hard to see. You can see the shadow there move a little bit as it comes over and eats. I could actually see it from my side a little bit better. Uh, the positioning here was difficult because there's not only a real steep bank behind me, but some trees that were making it difficult to get a good angle with the drone there. Um, but was able to get that one. Beautiful mirror uh, to wrap things up on. 
So appreciate you watching, guys. Hope you liked it. Like and subscribe, and we'll catch you later.